All right, welcome back to Super Smash Galaxy uh, 16. Oh, the match is already starting, so I don't have any time to do an intro. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, guys, I don't have any time to do an intro. Y'all go ahead and start. <laughs> we can't see. Three, really leaving us in the blind one, here, Pika. Go. I've made a mistake. Right. There, there are no m m mistakes at Super Smash there Galaxy. Are no mistakes. Uh, no what mistakes. Um. Create output our projector, which is going interestingly. It's uh, an Incineroar versus an Isabel. Four screen display oh. three. There we go. Um, stream. Um, projector streaming output. There. Okay, you should be able to see it now. I'm dumb. Right. Sorry. There we go. Hi, dumb. I'm Dan. Oh, wow. I'm here along with Peter, uh, and we are starting. Uh, yeah, and there, right, right now we're seeing that uh, Rogue is do. Doing pretty well for a matchup where Isabel's pretty good at just throwing out those slingshots and just edge guarding. So Rogue is doing a very good job at not getting hit by those and uh, being able to get back to stage. And you that know, was. The... I've noticed the meta on uh, Incineroar has changed a lot. They have to play just so smartly. Uh, I would say even smarter than uh, Ganondorf's need to. Yeah, for sure. And we did see that a few times whenever. Rogue went, uh, went for those Darkest Lariats that uh, Venal would sometimes just let it hit them because that move, if every single hit of it hit, uh, connects the shield, it will shield break. So, but it doesn't do very much knockback on those later hits. So, because of that, it's worth it to just take the hit. Interesting that he uh, he opted to go for the, uh, the upwards throw off of the Lariat, but it got the kill. And a really nice recovery there as he uh, is clinging onto the stock, trying to get some extra credit here. Uh, a little bit cornered, though. Yeah. And I think the reason why the Rogue went for the upwards instead... Oh. Is what? because of the stage, yes. And yes. it works there with the up throw uh, from Vino. Yeah. And Vino is taking a lot of these hits. That's going to take it. That move kills so early. Especially and, when you're a little dog. <laughs> yeah. Cats versus dogs right now in a matchup as old as time. <laughs> and oh, nice neutral Vino. Ooh, Rogue is putting up so much pressure right now. Vino needs to see something here in order to just turn it around. Anything to really just help get a little bit of that momentum off. And it doesn't help uh, Vino that uh, Rogue is pretty much playing his uh, bait and rush perfectly. He knows exactly when his moments are, and he's hitting with every shot. Ooh. And not only is he up a stock, but he's also got a huge percent lead here, uh, trying to finish it off early. Yeah, th pretty much any Lariat at this point from either direction could kill. And that is not what you want to be in when you're down a stock either, because... If it's the last stock situation, maybe that would be understandable. <gasps> oh, uh, you know, the, oh, wow. I believe that was an air dodge, just manages to uh, escape that Lariat. Uh, it's not over, but it'll be very hard to uh, to get the kill again. Yeah, for sure. Especially because Incineroar is such a heavy character that even- Oh, when he's got he get... one there. Yeah. Even when getting a kill like that though, Vino needs to get a kill from an edge guard here because without it, it's going to take way longer just to be able to get something going. Oh, what an excellent trump into a ledge guard. That was just so smart, and he takes game one. Yeah, that was really smart because we also saw that throughout this game, we have to see quite a lot of different play from Vino here to be able to deal with Rogue's next game because if Rogue keeps this momentum up it could be a way worse situation like a way bigger deficit mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, but I like this stage uh, I think that it's definitely a lot better than the last one yeah but well actually no right now we're seeing that it's a, at about a similar pace um, here with the because oh but that's gonna hurt a lot because earlier we were seeing that Rogue and Vino were staying at about the same percentage last game until the end, but Rogue has been able to, for a lot of this, just get huge leads. 
and Rogue only needs like a right there, just a like little that. bit of something. Yeah. Oh, uh, I will have to say, <clears throat> Vinny now has done a much better job containing him uh, so far. Uh, even yeah. though the patterns were pretty similar uh, to what they are now, it just it looks like a lot more even game. It doesn't look nearly. Oh wow, Perry into up air, and this could uh, this could turn the tides perhaps. Oh no, that missed. What? The SD just. How did that not go far enough? I'm not sure. I've never seen that happen like that. Yeah, that's wild. And Rogue could. Rogue could really take advantage of this. Getting that. Oh my. 30% off. That's going to be bad. And 166 and not dead. I mean, you've got to make your move now. Yeah, for sure. And Rogue is just getting in more and more damage here. Oh my god, with the read, seeing that Vino was probably going to go for the air dodge in as a panic option. Needed that. Yeah, but 61% already. That is very dangerous. 70, 81, not where you want to be against it. Sidor, that's probably going to... No, barely oh, not. not. Barely. Ooh. And we're seeing here that Rogue is just on fire here. Very fitting for an Incineroar player. Well, from the looks of it, he's really uh, seemed to do well. Beat, uh, I believe it was a Little Mac uh, earlier, yes, against SMG Sisters, and beat uh, Aloist, or Aloist, uh, I'm not sure of the pronunciation, but uh, I've seen them play in the side. Very good player, so uh, I have a sinking suspicion that Rogue has been hot uh, all night. Yes, definitely, and that does make sense as well, because if you are playing Incineroar at this level, you need to be mm -hmm. running hot. Definitely. Very momentum-based player, I would say. Character. Yes. And one of the common things about grapplers, especially in Sinor, is that they have to instill fear in the opponent and make them panic. And that is definitely what we've been seeing Rogue do to be able to take games off of Vino. But Vino has made it close. Uh, getting to normal character uh, kill percent, which means not quite kill percent for Ensign, but uh, considering uh, Vino is only at 18% and pretty much taking control of this stock, it's looking a lot closer. Yes, but we're also seeing that that kill throw oh. just barely finally getting it. Kalos is a very big stage, so this is a very bad spot for... like. Not the greatest stage pick to be behind against Incineroar when you're playing a character with such a such a lot of uh, vertical kill options. Definitely, um, but I mean, still, it's still possible. A, a Gimp can kill at any percent. It's a one-one stock situation, and uh, Vino does have that. Uh, oh, does have wow. that fishing rod as well as the Lloyd, which makes a play here for the first time. Yeah, for sure, and. But this this is a very dangerous situation as well because now V now is at a percent that could almost kill at any like at, for any angle. Mm -hmm. yeah, because it definitely if, wouldn't say this is tied by any means. Yeah, for sure. And this ooh, that is not good because that was able to send all the way to the blast zone and give great positioning. And Rogue just needs anything and Vino needs to challenge these recoveries more because Rogue has just been able to get back to stage for free every single time. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was thinking that too, actually. Uh, Incineroar has one of the most uh, notor notoriously uh, uh, exploitable recoveries uh, in the game. Oh, is that going to kill that, easily? Yeah, yeah that, no, oh, no, doesn't. Barely. Wow. Hanging on by a thread. This is not... <gasps> Oh no, and the turnaround smash attack, and he ties this up with just clinging to his stock. Yeah, by the skin of his going right into our third game here, and it's going to be interesting to see which stage Rogue picked here. Battlefield, okay. That is kind of interesting, because... Oh. Oh, but right away we're seeing Vino is oh out for blood off stage right now. That looked like it was about to be the stock and just barely manages to get back to the ledge. Yeah, that was such a great job from Rogue of managing to get back even through that 
But getting that down throw back here was definitely very good positioning and getting quite a bit of damage here. V now is in a very dangerous spot. It from even though that one string looked very convincing, it was not it was the only thing that V now has seemed to get so far. You know what's interesting on that uh <clears throat> that roll in uh, guard from Vino, he tried to go for the forward smash, but he tried to pay, uh, space himself a little bit. If he had just gone for it on the spot, I think that might have hit. Possibly, maybe even killed. Maybe, yeah. He just seemed a little hesitant, and you can't be hesitant when going for those kind of plays against a heavy character. Uh, yeah, that can be the sure. difference between an early stock and uh, getting walled out. Definitely, and... But right now we're seeing that V now is starting to put up a little bit of pressure at the ledge for once. This is a completely different situation than how we've seen V now play for the previous games in this set. Also, that would have killed on a different stage, right? I mean, uh, probably. Um, definitely on Yoshi's. Mm. Uh, gonna kill though. Wow. And Back to not to kill there either, but a nice uh, <clears throat> pot attack there. Oh, very smart there. Holding down while using the upbeat to, to go above the ledge. And we're seeing right now that Rogue is mm. getting quite a bit of damage here. This is a very big stage as well, so it's going to be very hard for Vino to get more damage. I mean, for Vino to get this stocking and prevent Rogue from getting more extra credit. Rogue just really, again, being allowed to recover almost for free. Yeah, definitely. And that is a problem because we saw that earlier in this game, Vinal was putting on that pressure, not letting Rogue just get back to stage, but putting Rogue in that top lasso and taking it. And 72% on the board already, though. Yeah, I mean... Oh, oh no! Well, I was about to say, at least the stocks are tied, but... Uh... Wow, this could be oh, trouble. 32% already. <gasps> oh, oh no. That could have been really interesting if he had managed to get a second play off of that, uh, of that fishing rod. Yes, definitely. But Rogue is well aware of that kind of those tactics and seeing it was able to tech it very quickly. Why do I get the feeling he's played this matchup before? He just seems to know exactly how to avoid all of these... Uh, these best options yes definitely like may have to look into some of rogue's previous games so that we can see just how much isabel matchup experience he has oh and very smart there seeing that v now was going for coverage for pretty much every other option from ledge and this is oh. really not looking good. Yeah, this is very dangerous here. That uh, <clears throat> jumping neutral air was a little bit premature from the now rogue uh, predicted it, and now he's got the advantage here and the stock lead by almost the exact percents. Which, when you're a heavy, is more. Oh, that might take. Oh, that is. That that is. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's what he needs to do. That's what Vino needs to do if he wants any, any chance of winning this. Yeah, especially because that could work at pretty much any percent, too. So mm -hmm. it could completely turn this game around and win Vino the set. But that's not enough because Ooh. the Lariat hits. That killed a little bit earlier than I thought. But Incineroar, right? That is going to take it.